Central Beirut bus station, and this is what travellers call, and they're not really exaggerating, a one-way ticket to death. The bus to Raqqa, the Syrian city ISIS call their capital. They've sold nine tickets for the 24-hour trip through the regime-held capital Damascus and onwards. Yet nobody wants to show their face, apart from this man, the manager, because he's not actually going. He explains the rules. A woman that's not dressed right will be sent to Islamic training. She, of course, needs a male relative to escort her. Men need to leave their beards grown long in their natural state, with mustaches trimmed. Trousers should not be tight and a certain height over shoes. But ISIS realized when people travel, they can't always look like that, so it's okay. Most who fill these seats seem sure somehow ISIS will let them in, yet won't say why. Well, it is remarkable that a bus still goes from Beirut to Raqqa, but this is what it looks like on the return journey. Absolutely empty. Those getting on board do not expect to come back. Tonight's cargo is on its final journey. A man who died of a heart attack, we're told, headed to his hometown for a family funeral. Sadness at this loss here, but also nervous last cigarettes. Not because of the trip ahead, where fighter jets often fly low, buzzing the coach, but because smoking and music are banned under ISIS's medieval rules. Nicotini fingers will later be soaked in perfume, racy pictures and music deleted from phones. Snipers, airstrikes on the way, their matter-of-fact world. A plane might strike some distance from the bus. It's normal. No one can really pin down where the sniper fire is coming from. That's when the passengers get afraid. Tonight, a hurdle arises. They don't have the paperwork to take the body out of Lebanon. We learn that the bus did leave 24 hours later. One man telling us, Raqqa used to be his heaven, but ISIS, the war, poverty, and even the trash have now made it hell. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN, Beirut.